Going back to the ApoE4, you know, because it is such a, a big a genetic risk factor for late onset Alzheimer's disease. And, you know, as you mentioned, you know, at least about a quarter of the population has one allele. Um, I know you had done some some research. We talked about how blood brain barrier seems to break down, at least you're able to measure it, you know, in, in earlier in or, non, cognitively normal individuals. But you also mentioned uh, in one of your papers, there was a protein, cyclophilin A matrix metalloproteinase, uh, as a as a protein that seems to be really involved in, you know, it's an inflammatory protein. But how does it affect the blood brain barrier? Yeah, um, no. So, in the same paper we were mentioning earlier, that people carrying at least one allele of ApoE4, they tend to have more leakage in the medial temporal lobe that we can see with MRI and biomarkers. But for, of course, it's a, it's a great descriptive uh, study, but we went uh, deeper to try to understand how this is happening. And what we found is the people um, carrying the APOE4 allele. So APOE, APOE, you have to know that the major source of APOE are astrocytes. So um, when astrocytes makes APOE, so if you have APOE3, makes APOE3. If you have four, makes APOE4. We know that there is a, a different affinity to uh, one of the APOE receptor that is called LRP1 on pericytes. So astrocytes and pericytes are close to each other. They are here to maintain the, the vasculature as well as neural function and your vascular coupling. But if you, so the APOE4 is, is, I don't want to say anything wrong, but there is a different affinity to the LRP1 receptor you have less chance to buy to LRP1, which will induce a cascade within the pericytes that involve uh, nf kappa b it's a bit compli complicated, cyclophilin A, which then will lead to expression of MAP9 from pericytes and other T-L cells. So basically, if you have the APOE4 gene, you, are, you will uh, induce much more that cascade uh, than people having the APOE3 because it doesn't bind to the LRP1 or pericyte, it doesn't trigger the cascade of expressing cyclophilin A, which will release MMP9. And MMP9 is the matrix metal met metalloproteinase 9 that is basically is doing two things that you don't want. Number one is uh, disrupting and the tight junctions between the endothelial cells. So all the endothelial cells are tightly uh, close to each other and there is tight junctions in between. So this MMP9 will eat up the, those tight junctions. So if you emit if you think about this, you're going to get some gaps, and that's what we call breakdown of the barrier. So you're going to start to see leakage. And the other thing is there is a basement membrane. We haven't talked about this. But there is a basement membrane wrapping around the vessels and wrapping around the pericytes. And MMP9 is also eating up this basement membrane. So two things that will basically break down the, 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 the integrity of the, the blood brain barrier. And interestingly, MMP9, it's good to go back a bit, a few years back. It's a very nice marker when it comes to blood brain, blood brain barrier leakage. We know after stroke, when you have a, a blood clot in, the, in your brain, you have within to, to, the next few hours, you have a, a breakdown of the blood brain barrier and the big ischemic lesion and, and things like that. And we know that this breakdown uh, is correlated with uh, high levels of M MMP9. There is a perfect correlation of this breakdown. But very interestingly, when you have a, a, an ischemic stroke, you have a second breakdown a few days later. So it's a, what we call biphasic, a biphasic, or biphasic, I don't know, that's my French, a biphasic um, breakdown of the barrier, two hours and few days. And, and same thing for MMP9, two peaks of expression. So it's a very nice marker that goes very well with a uh, brain by property. So we found this in APOE4, uh, and both MMP9 and cyclophene A levels were elevated in cerebral spinal fluid of people carrying the APOE4 gene. So we were we were talking about three to four fold, if I remember correctly, compared to people carrying the APOE3 uh, gene. So that's a major thing, and um, so. And we also found that we've used uh, uh, pluripotent stem cells. So we also used uh, human-derived uh, pericytes. Uh, so iPSCs-derived pericytes in culture. And when we, you look at them, they are, these are just cultured human pericytes, human 
um, on the teal cells and different cell types. And we did that for um, donors from APOE4 and donors from APOE3. And just at baseline, we were uh, able to also see that the pericytes just at baseline, looking at that, they produce much more uh, cyclophene and MAP9 than the, the pericytes that do have APOE3. So it's, these are the evidence that we, we put. And uh, I think that goes very well with that is we published a follow-up study in mice where we decided to target cyclophene, to block cyclophene, to see whether if we have mice that do have APOE4, if we block cyclophene, can we restore vascular function? And ultimately, the goal is to restore neuronal function and cognition. So we did that. We used the humanized APOE4 mice. These are mice that have the, the APOE4 gene of a human. So we, we have also the mice that do have the APOE3. We follow them uh, as they age. We do MRI on them. We look at their blood-brain barrier function, how uh, the blood flow and everything. And we, we see exactly uh, what we see in human is they have reduced blood flow in the brain. They have a leakier blood-brain barrier. They have some... Uh, behavioral uh, problems also in terms of cognition, when what we call novel object recognition, novel object location, those memory issues. So these mice are quite, you know, doing what we were expecting to. And we gave every day for one month to the APOE4 mice, we gave uh, a non-type, an inhibitor of cyclophene A that is called uh, Debio025. So that's a drug that is available currently in clinical trial for hepatitis C. So we gave it to the mouse every day for one month, and we checked the same thing. We did MRI, we looked at uh, brain uh, tissue analysis, we did behavior, and, and as we were expecting, just by doing that, we were able, again, it's not a, fully, a full recovery, but we were able to partially and significantly restore vascular function. So just by broken cyclophene A, we were able to restore the tie junctions. We were able to restore the pericyte coverage of the vasculature. And ultimately, the, those mice had less neuronal damage and less cognitive problems. So it's a good, uh, good paper that says if you target the, the vessels, you can have a big impact on neuronal function and cognition. So that's, uh, that's kind of the whole story into two papers uh, uh, regarding the APOE4. Yeah. Is that drug, um, is it, a couple of questions re regarding it. So the, is it the same as the Aliceporavir, I think is what they Yes. Do? It is. Yes. Okay. How safe is that? I mean, sure. is that, uh, you know, something, I mean, first of all, like, I mean, like if you have an APOE4 allele, it's like, you know, like, could you take that prophylactically? Would you have to take it like your whole life? Like, is it, yeah. you know, like that would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, these are good questions. I don't know if I'm the expert to address these questions, but um, adisporivir, is it safe? So first of all, I wouldn't say it's safe. But, so there had been a um, few clinical trials and unfortunately some of them have, have been stopped. And I think it was for a design for hepatitis C. Yeah. It's also currently used, by the way, it has been used a year ago for COVID-19 in France. Or to to kind of uh, for the long people having very long like a lot of long information, uh, things like that I think. But I again I I haven't checked recently, but I know they they stopped the trial for one person that had some cardiac issues after the treatment. So I, I cannot say it's safe or it's not safe. What I what I think is uh, we need to design the trial and give it to the right people. I think uh, rather than giving uh, like this. I think you have to go through criteria uh, before being able to give it. I don't know if targeting cyclophene A is the best approach. At least we know it partially works in animals, but it might be another possibility might be to target MMP9. So these are close to each other. This, this has been also studied quite a lot in the context of stroke. Uh, but as you know, there's a thousand compounds that failed in stroke for many reasons. Um, but I don't think anyone has tried targeting MMP9 to look at a more subtle blood brain barrier leakiness and see whether we can kind of seal the barrier. Um, yes, I'm not, 
Yeah. So basically, that's the whole purpose of what we are doing right now is we are, we know the a few targets that might not be the safest or maybe not the best target, but we have a list of other targets that we are studying, which will uh, hopefully do the same thing. We want to restore parasite function. We want to restore undertail function and, and make sure that the barrier is uh, not leaky, pushing the flow as you need to, to for your brain. And, uh, and make sure also something we haven't really talked, but uh, the transporters of the brain barrier, if, if you start having a leaky barrier, you're going to have some transport issues. Though. So it comes back to glucose, oxygen, but also uh, amino acids. If you have a leaky barrier and if you have your vessels that are not functional, there is a few receptors, uh, RAGE, LRP1, uh, there is a few others. If they, if they don't work properly, you're going to, you won't be able to to waste. I mean, to clear your your waste from your brain while you sleep and things like that. So you won't. You will have a tendency to accumulate more amyloid oligomers and possibly develop plaques. And so everything is interconnected. But uh, again, yeah, I think fixing the blood vessels, whether cytokine is the right target, I don't know. But uh, I think it's promising. We just have to see who will benefit from getting the drug. So if you, if you're having a, a dysfunctional blood brain barrier, you're, you know, if you're basically having blood brain barrier breakdown, everything yeah. you've been describing, um, the glymphatic system, which is when you sleep, it yeah. squirts the cerebral spinal fluid into the brain to clear out the amyloid plaques. Is yeah. that, is that also impaired somewhat? Um, so there is active research in this area, uh, obviously, but that's, that, um, that's fair to say. Yes, of course, if you have because the you know at the arterial level you have the perivascular space, which is enlarged when you sleep. It has been shown, um, and 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 yeah, of course, if you have disruption of these vessels, obviously the perivascular space will be um, uh, the properties and the cells being around the perivascular macrophages and everything will be highly disturbed. So yes, it's fair to say it's just lymphatic. The glymphatic system, it's, um, it's a very controversial nowadays, uh, as you may know. Uh, we don't really know whether, I mean, the, the, the fact that we clear uh, things from uh, the arterial level and then it gets, uh, there's a convective flow that drains the interstitial fluid back to the veins. That's, the, that's kind of uh, the theory of the system, but I think it requires a bit more work to prove that this is truly happening in my opinion, but there's also other system. There's the iPad, so that's the intramural periarterial drainage. So there's basically either the lymphatic and or the iPad system to clear out toxins out of the brain. But again, I'm not the expert on that, but it's fair to say that, of course, if you have vascular dysfunction, the, the clearance of, of toxins, not only amyloid, but alpha synuclein or other things, uh, will be uh, highly disturbed, yes. so. Uh, in my opinion, that that sort of puts, of course, the the vascular function and blood brain barrier integrity upstream of amyloid in a way, because you'll lead, you know, having that dysfunction first will then lead to more, you know, amyloid accumulation, you know, if you're not able to clear it out, right? I mean, so uh, what do you think of um, a lot of? So there's been a lot of failed attempts to target amyloid beta plaques, amyloid soluble soluble amyloid. Uh, although recently there's the lecanemab, which is targets the protofibrils, so it's still like a soluble form of amyloid, but uh, there's some positive results with that uh, drug. Do you have any thoughts about it? Do you think? Yeah, I think I like to be optimistic and I like to be positive. So yeah, I think it's good that we have drugs for not only for yeah for research for people also for people for the families affected. It's good that we have a drug that can remove to some extent, the plaques, and there's evidence of that. What is a bit, a bit less, uh, a bit more controversial is the, uh, the impact on cognition. So there is some, some um, you know, improvement, but it's not what you would hope for. Um, so which goes back to, okay, uh, targeting amyloid only is probably not the way to go. Um, and it's probably not sufficient or might be too late also. So it goes back to our important research. If you tackle things and, and 
and target things much more earlier than that, you will have a better chance. Um, yeah, so I don't have much, uh, much to say. I think I would see more like as a cocktail of treatment. If you give something that will make your blood vessels um, working as they should work in terms of pericyte function, clearance, endothelial function, plus the drug of ant like an anti-amyloid in E4, um, I would bet that you would have more chance to to have a a bigger impact, a bigger positive impact very positive impact on cognition. But again, this it has to be done very early. If, you, if, you, if your brain is full of plaques, it's probably too late already. So that's the importance of the research we do right now. But I see that as a cocktail, maybe, uh, improving the blood vessels, because we know we need those blood vessels to be functional, to clear out amyloid. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the combination would be probably a viable solution in the near future, maybe.